Hello, and welcome to the next episode of It's Your Time to Shine, a podcast about being a mom in a modern world. My name is Jaspreet Kaur, and with me is my co-host, Lisa Vora. Hey, Jas. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Lisa? Good, good. We have a special guest today, actually, a co-worker of Jaspreet's, Dennis Strubart. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Lisa. It's good to be here. Good to have you here. So Dennis is like super dad. He has four kids ranging from three till 27. And he was in the Army for 24 years and now works in San Antonio for a financial service company. So go ahead, Dennis. Tell us. Tell us a little bit about you. What's your story? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the super dad thing, I'm not too sure about, um, but I do enjoy being a dad. I do have a, a it's actually a 28-year-old, um, a 25-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a um, 3-year-old. So <clears throat> it's a very interesting uh, dynamic in my family having such, you know, I also have, well, eight grandkids. No way. Wow. <laughs> I do. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I, <clears throat> so my 28-year-old has six. She has six kids. I need to meet her. That's correct. Wow. <laughs> Dennis would make like the perfect Punjabi man, wouldn't he, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> Let's convert him now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dennis, tell us a little bit about your background, because um, I met Dennis at work, like you mentioned, Lisa, and something that I was really um, impressed by was his story, because he's on his second career right now. And um, so tell us a little bit about your background, Dennis. Sure. So I was born and raised here in, in, uh, in South Texas, uh, just about two hours south of here. And I went and uh, joined the Army <clears throat> directly out of high school. And um, I spent 24 years in the Army and uh, retired back in 2012. And I took a year off where I went to uh, down to the family ranch and, and worked there for a little while. Um, and then uh, I got to my present job um, <clears throat> as quickly as I could. Uh, I just couldn't do the, uh, the whole no job thing. Um, so I, I, do, I do enjoy the benefits of having retirement pay come in from the Army as well as my current you know, job. Um, and quite frankly, you know, I enjoy my current job uh, a lot more than I did my uh, previous job in the military due to the fact that I actually get to have family time now. So Yeah, that's amazing. So let's talk about that a little bit. How old were you when you enlisted? I was uh, 17 when I enlisted. Um, I was actually 18 when I graduated basic training, though. So my parents had to sign paperwork. You were one of those people we hear about who takes a permission slip to the Army and says, my mom said I could come. That's it. The drill sergeants make fun of us, that's for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, my brother, when he enlisted um, into the Navy, he had just turned 18 as well. And I was three years older than him. And something that I remember about that experience for our family was that 18 is a kid, like 17, 18 is a kid. And here you have someone who's going to go through basic, who's going to learn um, how to, someone who's going to learn how to, to interact like in combat, but they don't know very much about life yet. Yeah, so young. Yeah. Yeah. So what's fascinating to me about you is so you went in at 17 and um, then you got married shortly after. How old were you when you got married? When I was you know, 18, and before I even turned 19, I'd already seen combat in Panama, um, and then got married uh, to my first wife shortly thereafter. Um, so that was in December of 89. I got married in May of 90. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, and then how quickly did you have your first child? Okay, so um, when I got married to my first wife, she already had a child. So uh, we, you know, we went through the process, and I adopted her. And we, her and I, didn't actually have our own child um, until probably three years later. And your um, first, your oldest daughter that you adopted, how old was she when you got married to your wife? She was, um, she was about five months old. Five months old. Okay. So did you know her while she was pregnant? Uh, uh, yes. So. Okay. Um, or did you have what we call an army wedding where? You fall in love and get married over the course of a weekend. No, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> That's funny. No, um, we. I knew her. Um, you, you know, we, we were just a group of friends. Uh -huh. um, and uh, you know, Ashley, or my, you know, my daughter's actual father, biological father, wasn't in the picture, um, okay. and kind of he just kind of ran around, you know, and he ended up getting out of the military. Hard to find type of guy. Okay, was never a, any kind of father figure to her. <clears throat> um, much less a boyfriend or what have you to to right. my ex-wife. So uh, it was uh, it was good, you know, just 
knowing that uh, I was going to be the influence in, in her life versus, you know, somebody else. So how many more kids did you guys have after that? Just one. So we had my the, tw- the one that's 25 now. We had her in 93, and then it was just uh, those two children for yeah, another what, almost 20 years uh, before I actually retired from the military. So 21 years. Man, that's, a, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. That's amazing. I wouldn't wish that life on anybody, though, quite frankly, and not necessarily relationship-wise. Just happen to try to be a, a family man uh, and uh, and father, and at the same time, you know, be in the military, be a leader, combat, you know, different deployments, um, always away from home. Yeah. So. And you were you were dad at such a young age. Yeah. <laughs> what happened after that, like after your divorce from your first wife? So, um, you know, I decided, uh, you know, the kids were out of school and they were kind of going about their business, college and, and raising families of their own. <clears throat> um, and I decided it was time for me to retire, uh, get out of the Army. And um, so I started doing a lot of stuff back home, uh, went to a football field dedication and, and I, um, you know, uh, uh, saw my current wife there and uh, at the time, you know, we were just friends. We all went to high school together, and she was going through a similar a similar process. Oh, so you knew her from before? You guys reconnected? I did, yes. Okay. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, we did. We reconnected, and things just went from there. You know, we started dating and uh, found ourselves, you know, married. <laughs> did you ever expect to have more kids? Um, no. At that time, I really didn't. I think... As her and I started dating and, um, you know, f- uh, falling in love with, if you will, uh, and deciding that, you know, we're going to spend the rest of our lives together, I think, uh, you know, it wasn't at first going through our minds, but, um, of course, she had a seven-year-old, or at that time, how old was he? I think he was five. So you had two girls and he, she had a son. Yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we decided, hey, you know, we're still, you know, I, at the time I was, I think, 40 42. Um, she hadn't hit her 40s yet. And she was like, if we're going to have children, we need to do it soon. And I, you know, and I thought about it. I, I really, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a hard decision. You know, it was something that I feel we needed to do. Yeah. Uh, I think that it was definitely something we wanted to do together. So yeah. I think when you find someone that you love and you have that connection, then you want to do whatever it is you love. And you have said um, multiple times that you wanted to be a family man. That was a focus for you for a long time. So it's natural that you'd want to, you know, start a family with her and kind of uh, solidify that bond that you guys have. I am like one of the things that that um, is tugging at my heartstrings a little bit is that you had a whole life. You had a whole career in the Army. You had a whole marriage that lasts longer than people's lifelong marriages um, before you even turned like 41. And then you had you were able to um, have enough agency for yourself to start to start over and to and to do more. I want to hear more about your relationship with your kids and also your relationship with, um, for example, your wife's ex-husband. You have a stepson who has a different biological dad. What's that relationship like? And um, just talk about that a little bit. The relationship between myself, my wife, um, my stepson, and uh, and my daughter right now are, um, you know, it, it's great. Uh, they all get along. Um, I don't I don't feel like I see, um, you know, my other two daughters enough, but they're out of state. You know, I have one that lives in Arkansas and, and then another one that lives in California, and her husband's actually a uh, uh, in the Air Force. So... It's hard to to see them as much as I'd like to. Um, and as far as, you know, being a stepfather um, to, uh, you know, a, a, a young man who's, I mean, he's now he's 11 years old is, um, you know, it's an honor. Uh, I've been, I've had women around me my whole life. You know, it's always been, you know, just me against the world, so to speak. Because <laughs> <laughs> girls run the world, right? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. I, hey, I won't argue that. Um, so... You know, having him around and being able to teach him the things that I learned when I was a kid is uh, not that you can't do that with a young lady, but it's a little easier, you know, have, you know, having yeah. a boy around and being able to teach him how to do things, um, whether it's, you know, uh, fix a fence out on the ranch or the importance of taking care of equipment out there and and your own equipment here, you know, and keeping your room clean and why we do those kinds of things. It's right. um, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting thing having a boy finally. 
Um, but, you know, as far as the relationship with his um, with his biological father, you know, I feel like <clears throat> we have a really good relationship. And um, I, I say that because he is, uh, you know, he's one of the few out there that I probably feel the way he does. But I think that he understands, you know, that his kids' best interests are, you know, are in my mind. You know, I want to make sure that he grows up right to give, uh, you know, give him things that I didn't have growing up and um, and make sure that he is empathetic, that he, that, you know, that he is truly selfless because he is a great kid. I mean, he's got the best heart. <clears throat> um, he, he, he wants to please everybody. Mm-hmm. But the, at the same time, you know, he doesn't necessarily get down on himself and act out when he can't please somebody. Um, he gets great grades in school, great conduct. You know, um, he's already a black belt in Taekwondo. So he understands the concept of, of, of being selfless and integrity and the importance of, um, you know, being there for people that can't necessarily take care of themselves. Or... Yeah. No, I think that's incredible. And we know, like, that modeling, that kind of behavior is so impactful and, and really helps children kind of, like, understand the framework and the guardrails um, of the world that they live in. Do you, when you, like, talking about the relationship with your um, with your son's father do you feel like there are aspects of it where you've had to give up some things from your for yourself for the greater good of your son or for for your other children as well um I, yeah of course i mean i think so i think that's part of being a parent um you know you, you talk about work life balance well uh, and i'm sure you've heard it said it's not really work life balance it's just life balance mm-hmm. it's so you know er, everybody has work um, that they have to do. Everyone has, you know, most people are fortunate enough to have families that are in their lives and you just got to figure out how to balance all that. But of course I've made sacrifices that I may not have made earlier in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, because work seems like it's so important when you're young, but when you spend so much time away from your family and and the people that you love, you kind of learn that, you know, work doesn't have to come first all the time. Um, yeah, yeah. you definitely, as you get older, that, that priority changes. Yeah. You have to, you have to find, you have to find a balance, and I, I tend to tilt the scales a little bit more in favor of my family. This is something I really i am curious about, your parenting style with your first kids versus your second children, the second batch of children. You're in a whole different time, different world. We're talking today's world of phones and social media versus the other world of no phones and social media. And, and also just I think that today there's more influence just because it's so um, – you can get all the information so quickly, other people's opinions, blogs, and things like that. So as a parent who's been a parent for so long, two different worlds, in my opinion, um, what what are some of the differences you're seeing in parenting? And also, not just two different worlds, you're a lot older. How have you changed your parenting style, and how have you changed um, between raising your first set of kids versus raising your second set of kids? Uh, I'm definitely a lot more patient now than I was, um, you know, in, in my prior life, so to speak. I, I think that uh, as you get older, you, you tend to get a little more patient. Uh, and, and uh, of course, society changes. You know, you're, we're, I'm talking about there is probably a, well, a 22-year gap between one child and the other. Um, so, uh, you know, it, you, you learn as you get older, of course. And, uh, and of course, my wife, she's, God bless her, she... <laughs> She's, she's taught me a lot of patience, too, um, because coming out of the, out of the military, you, you know, patience is hard to come by. Um, but uh, seeing her parent uh, as well has taught me a lot. So I'm definitely more, pati- uh, more patient with my children now, and I'm also more understanding. I feel like uh, I understand why a three-year-old acts the way they do <clears throat> um, versus, you know, 20-something years ago, I, you know, I was just learning. I didn't know why a three-year-old was, you know, always wanting to say no. Or, you know, what is her problem? Why is she saying no? Uh, <laughs> now I know, you know, that's just part of girl. Just, that's what three-year-olds do. Yeah, I kind of feel like if I had, I mean, I'm four, I had a kid late, so I was 37 when I had my daughter. And I feel like if I had been 21 or 22, I would have a totally different kid just because I was totally different. <laughs> I have three kids and they're all different because <laughs> of the mistakes <laughs> that I've made with the first two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. I want to ask you, Dennis, who is your favorite child? <laughs> oh. You know, um, it's – everybody says – and I've heard this. I Just the other night, I think I was watching a program where that question was asked. And <clears throat> for me to tell you I don't have a favorite 
That would be a lie. It would be a lie. As much as I hate to say that, you know, one or the other is my favorite, I would certainly say that one is more enjoyable Mm -hmm. um, because Mm -hmm. now I understand more. So, of course, the three-year-old I have now is just, I can't take my eyes off of her because I'm like, well, that's (laughs) why, you know, that's why Kayla did this and why Ashley did that. And and this is why Junior is doing what she's doing um, is because it's just part of being a three-year-old. And she is so, that child is so smart. Um, smart as a whip, that kid. And she's got this personality that just doesn't stop. Um, very inquisitive <laughs> and just, I, I can't, um, I know I'm going to have a hard time in about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel too right now. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but they all have their great points, you know. Yeah. They all have their great points. And uh, fortunately, I learned a lot, you know, with my first two. So I want to redirect that to Just Breathe. Who's your favorite child? Five seconds. I don't have a favorite. Unlike Dennis, <laughs> I am a well-balanced mom. No, I really, you know what? I really don't have a favorite because they all bug me that the same degree. <laughs> they bug you the same. And, um, you know, you know, it's like what you're saying, Dennis, I think with your youngest, you do have, you absolutely have this sense of this is it. And um, you do learn more and you have, you gain more confidence, right? Sure. I think that's an aspect of it. But my children, my, the personalities of my three, three children are so different. Their skills Mm -hmm. and their strengths are so different. You know, I have one child who has no problem with schoolwork and will get straight A's. And then I have another one who really struggles with the traditional education system but is super creative and has, like, a wonderful voice and, you know, really excels at music. And so there's something wonderful to love about all of them. And um, it's hard to pick a favorite right now being that they're not with me. But absolutely, I could pick a favorite if the three of them were in the same room with me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are welcome to ask me that question. <laughs> Who, who's your favorite, Lisa? So easy, Alyssa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to ask you one other question, um, Dennis. And this is like, you know, you talked a little bit about work-life balance. And you um, spent your time in the Army as a leader. And I see some of those leadership qualities in you, even in your in your current job. So I think there's an aspect of being a natural leader as well. What kind of relationship did you have with young enlisted men when it came to their relationships with their families? Because you kind of had like a a little bit of a dichotomy there, right? You were wanted to be a family member, but you were away a lot. Um, tell me a little bit about the advice and the relationships you had with other young people that were in the military. Right. <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of times in the military, we you, know, you hear the term "suck it up." You know, it's your job. You need to do it. Um, I was, I was really never that guy. I was never that leader. You know, I did what I could to make sure that they spent as much time with their families as they could uh, when we were in the rear, so to speak. You know, not deployed. Because I knew what it was like to have to be in an environment where you're not deployed, but you're preparing to deploy, and you're just not spending that time with the family that you have to. Um, uh, so oh, that's nice. I, I, I made it a point to make sure that they got as much time with their families as possible, um, more time, you know, more so than, than most other people in the military probably. Um, Very because, empathetic leader. <laughs> that, no, but that's a skill that a lot of leaders actually don't have. You're right. I think empathy. <clears throat> I think empathy was something I learned as a at a very young age. But it's also something I think that you're de- you know, it develops as you grow up. But it's also yeah. something that you're born with. Mm-hmm. You know, some people are born more empathetic than others. Yeah. Um, I, agree. I mean, where I can understand as an example why people would be vegetarians and don't want to see uh, animals suffer, mm-hmm. so to speak. Um, but I can also understand the other side of the of the spectrum. So I, I get it. Um, uh, you know, I I get that and. You have to be to be a great to be a good leader. Even you have to you have to have empathy. You have to understand and um, and and put yourself in a position, you know, that those other people are in. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't already been there, and um, right. and make sure that you're making it a little bit better for them. So, I feel like I was, you know, I feel, I feel like I did my job as a as a leader, and I and I really do. I can honestly say that if you went back and found people that I was fortunate uh, fortunate enough to lead in, during my military career. They would probably tell you the same thing. Um, I have no, there's, there's, you know, it's one of those things where people are like, oh God, don't go back and ask those people. But for me, it's like, no, go find them all, ask them, because I'm curious too. I want to know have they found another leader that was like me mm-hmm. or the better than me, so maybe I can learn from that. Right. Because you learn from everything. You learn from the bad. You learn from the good, and mm-hmm. then you kind of make up your own leadership style from there. Right. Yeah, that's something I struggle with all the time because I come across a lot of. Um, leaders that are so different from me 
and you see some things that are so effective for one person and it's not it doesn't work right for it wouldn't work for me or it wouldn't work for you and so um but i think being like mindful of that and and being observant is in and of itself is a really great quality and not just for a leader but also for as a parent absolutely which is basically just leading a bunch of little people and launching them into the world right that's right i don't know ali leads me to be honest but yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just thought this was kind of a funny question. You have a three-year-old daughter, too. You have a 27-year-old who was three at some point. So here's my question. My daughter insists on wearing her purple skirt with her orange shirt and brown boots. What do I do? I have a vision for my child, how I want her to dress. She's got a vision, which obviously doesn't match my vision and is completely not mismatched. So I want to know from you, the parenting expert. <laughs> <laughs> Let her be herself. Ah, I knew that was going to be the answer. Wrong answer. Next. But you know what? I say that for a reason. <laughs> I really do. I, it, I just picked up my daughter yesterday from daycare, and guess what she had on? She had purple pants, a white shirt, and a doggone tutu. Oh, yeah, those tutus. Yeah, she. but you know, is it really worth, you know, having her throw the fit before you take her where she's got to go? But I was like, is it worth me having the fit? I... <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I actually let her do whatever, but inside I'm like, I had a vision. <laughs> but I, you know, I I have to say, like, I would make my kid change because women, I think there's a difference between women and men here. Moms get judged if our kid's hair is messy and if they're not matching by other moms. And I don't think dads do. I think dad drops off a kid with that outfit and they're like, aw, dad, daddy dropped you off today. Well, so if you're, so my advice is find a barrette that works, put the barrette in her hair and tell everybody she's a Clemson fan. There's a purple and orange. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? I actually think the answer, I, I'm not saying I'm any expert, is kind of the balance of both because I see, because you want your child to be who they are too. At the same time, you don't want to always give in every time. And I think there's a balance. So it's like sometimes, okay, this works. Sometimes I also want her to know that that she can't always get everything she wants all the time. So there's just a balance between the two. Like today I let her have her hair down, even though it's 90 degrees and humid. Well, that's very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. A compromise is very important. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. What was harder, jumping out of a plane or being a dad? Being a dad, by far. Um, you know, I'm learning now as I'm growing you know, older that um, it's definitely harder being a dad, but it's also funner or more fun, if you will. It's a... <clears throat> Jumping out of airplanes uh, is a job, um, and it can be fun, but it can also be horrifying. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like being a dad. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think it's harder to be a dad because you 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 really have to be critical of yourself and um, understand that uh, everybody's got their own personality. You know, and when, when, it, when you're a leader, you say that, but whenever you get home, everybody's supposed to have your personality or the personality you want them to have. Um, so. You can't do that. So it's, it's hard. It's hard being a dad. Yeah. It's easy to jump out of a plane. So interesting to hear that answer. Okay, I'm going to ask you one more question. Sorry, I said that was the last one. But um, what is the most memorable thing that you have being as like when someone says like fatherhood, Dennis, it's been going on for 28 years now, right? Um, what is your most memorable moment? There's definitely two times where I was able to watch my children being born. Um and, um, you know, to say that one is more memorable than, memorable than the other is it's hard because just that experience of watching, you know, um, a, a child come into the world, whether even if it's not yours, you know, and I, and I almost said three times because I was actually in the hospital room with my my uh, 25 year old when she had her first child. So every experience, oh, wow. you know, I've, I actually got to experience three children being born and um it's it's amazing, you know. That's that's something that I'll never forget. Um, and I think fatherhood. There's so many different experiences to say that there's one that sticks out. It's hard, you know. Um, I, I I was robbed of watching any of my children walk, except for my my three year old. I got to see her take her first steps, you know. So that's that's a, that's a memory that I'll Aww. never forget that. You know, and you know how little yeah. kids when they first take their steps are like, <laughs> yeah. they're wobbly. Yeah, <laughs> so funny, but it's amazing. You're watching this child that just came into the world eight months ago take steps and walk, and yeah. you're like, wow. Baby drafts do it in hours, but yes. <laughs> Why does it take humans so long? Oh my God, my husband has a whole bit about how human babies are like the most needy ever. Like, 
animals, they just like, they're born and they're out. Like, what is the deal? Anyway, he does a bit better. It's his bit. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you want to share, Dennis? No, I appreciate y'all's time. I really enjoyed it. Um, I've listened uh, to the podcast and to be a part of it now, I think is awesome. Thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. You are an inspiration to me, not just being a superhero at work, but I love hearing your um, your leadership stories and just your personality cause be, because you are like a rock. You're always happy. You're always like, it's not that big of a deal, which is um, – which is a voice I think a lot of us need, right? We all, we a lot of us need that. And so I love the fact that your perspective is always to bring back to the fact that nothing that we're doing on a day to day basis is life and life or death, um, which I think is really wonderful. So thank you, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. It reminds me of a song: "To make a mountain of your life is just a choice." Oh, I've never heard that. Very good. All right, and I want to give give a shout out to Dave Brown and Lost in Sound Recording Studio one of the greatest recording studios in all of Texas where we're recording today. And um, thank you listeners for joining in and we'll talk to you again soon.